This week, I've taken the newly updated Alfa Romeo Stelvio Veloce on a massive road trip. And the first thing that I thought of after a few hours of driving it was that this is the sort of car you get when you need some boot space but still want a sports car vibe. It competes against other medium SUVs like the BMW X3, Lexus NX and the Genesis GV70. There are three models for the Stelvio and ours is the mid-spec Veloce grade which will cost you $82,950 before on-road costs. Its price point should make it very competitive compared to its rivals but the features list isn't as robust as what it could be. The interior gets most of the big ticket items like extended leather trims, sport seats, panoramic sunroof as well as heated front seats and steering wheel as well as a Harman Kardon premium sound system which boasts 14 speakers. But the full specs are in my detailed written review at carsguide.com.au if you want more info. It definitely looks like an Alfa Romeo and has stayed true to its Italian heritage with its wide body stance, the classic grille, as well as the red calipers on these 20 inch alloys. It definitely looks sports car mean. The cabin looks well made with the black headliner, soft touch points, as well as just the overall quality of the build. The dash gets an upgrade with a 12.3 inch digital instrument panel, but annoyingly the multimedia system remains at 8.8 .8 inches, which is rather small for the market now. I really like the circular air vents in both rows because they add a bit of flair, but overall it's quite understated in here. And if you're looking for something as flashy as the exterior, you might be a bit disappointed. The front row definitely benefits the most in terms of space and features. I have plenty of head and leg room up front and I also didn't feel like I was encroaching onto the space of my passenger either. I love that the electric seats are so comfortable and that you've got power bolsters as well as extendable under thigh support too. Individual storage options throughout the car are on the slim side though. And this did pop up for my mum and I when we were on our road trip because there's not a lot of little spots to put smaller items like lip balms and snacks and things like that. And the cup holders, I'm going to call them drink bottle holders because they're so deep that they don't really fit a small takeaway coffee cup very well. They tend to pop off the lid, which was a little bit annoying. I do really like how big the storage bins are in the doors though. The charging options up front are fantastic with two USB-A ports, a single USB-C port, two 12 volt ports, plus a wireless charging pad to choose from. You are definitely spoiled for choice. This has a sort of no nonsense approach to its other tech though. Usually I don't mind that, but the multimedia system was a little bit too no nonsense. I found it to be quite laggy and just too small in general. It also just randomly turned itself off on me this week, quite a lot. This has built-in satellite navigation, but you can't just search for a name like a business name. You have to actually input an address, which is a little bit annoying because you end up using your phone anyway to search for it. Other than that though, I really like that it has wide Apple CarPlay and Android Auto too. The digital instrument panel looks upmarket, but isn't super customizable. And I was disappointed that the ambient lighting package only meant lights in the footwells, plus this tiny light up here. I think some additional lighting would have really transformed the nighttime driving experience. I'm in the back seat and while I fit, I wouldn't want to be much taller than my 168 centimeter or five foot six height because I'm behind my driving position. So if you're taller, you may feel a bit cramped back here. Also, it doesn't help that the wheel arches sort of push the seat forward as well. So it can be a little bit awkward getting in and out of this back row. The amenities back here are good with netted map pockets, reading lights, a single USB-A and C port, as well as directional air vents. And they're just as cute as the front. You don't have drink bottle holders in the doors. It's a bit too shallow for that, but you do get two cup holders and a phone holder in the fold down armrest. In the back row, you have Isofix child seat mounts on the outboard seats plus three top tethers, but two seats are going to fit best. Because it's a bit narrower back there and there's shallower leg room, middle seat passengers will probably be the most uncomfortable. And you can just fit a zero to four rearward facing child seat, but front passenger comfort is going to be encroached upon. 
The boot is a highlight for me because this has a great capacity at 499 litres. I love that it's a level load space and that you've got a 40-20-40 split fold on that rear row. Also, this had plenty of room for all of our luggage and our shopping on our road trip this week. This has a temporary spare tire underneath the floor as well as a retractable cargo blind. The cargo blind is quite stiff and it doubled as a shelf for me this week. I also really like the hands-free power tailgate. I always find them handy to have. There's only one engine available for the Stelvio until you get into the Performance Q grade. Now this has a two liter four cylinder turbo petrol engine with a maximum power output of 206 kilowatts and 400 newton meters worth of torque. It's an all wheel drive with an eight speed auto transmission, which delivers a very smooth driving experience. But at first glance at the specs, I didn't expect it to be as powerful as what it actually is. And let me tell you, it is very fun when you have to put your foot down. I mean, it can go from zero to 100 kilometers in just 5.7 seconds. This has been downright fun to drive. It's super responsive and has plenty of power, so much so that you're going to look forward to getting out onto the open road. The steering feels sporty and you only have to do little corrections because the car will move decisively. I really liked how it handled around corners. It just feels like this car is quite stable and really hugs the road. The suspension is sporty, aka hard, and you're going to know it when you hit a bump. But otherwise, it's still fairly comfortable on the open road. The big thing that marred the driving experience though for me was how loud the cabin gets at higher speeds. You will really notice the wind and road noise in this. When you're on a longer road trip, having that sound plus say your music on, you kind of end your trip and get out and feel like your senses are just battered around a bit. Not the best, but other than that, it's just delightful to drive. This is a really nice size to park and it's going to handle those tight little hotel car parks really well. But the reversing camera is honestly terrible for this grade level and I did expect better. Not only is the image itself quite small, but the quality is just not there either. I do like though that it has front and rear parking sensors. Overall though, it's not too bad. The official combined fuel cycle is seven liters per 100 kilometers. My real world usage came to 8.4 liters and that's after a lot of open road driving, 2,051 kilometers to be exact. So I would expect that figure to be a lot higher in the city. Based on the official combined fuel cycle and 64 liter fuel tank, you should theoretically be able to get a driving range of around 914 kilometers but my real world test saw that figure closer to 700 kilometers. Still respectable though, if you do want to do a roadie. The Stelvio doesn't have the longest safety list, but it does have most of the major items I always like to see on a family car. It has a maximum five star ANCAP safety rating, but it was based on testing done ages ago in 2017 and is due to expire in December. It only has six airbags, which is a bit low for a family car, but the curtain airbags do cover that back row. For more information, check out my written review at carsguide.com.au because it will go into more detail with the safety specs. The ongoing costs for this aren't too shabby because it comes with a five year unlimited kilometer warranty. You also get five years complimentary roadside assistance through DigiCall Assist. It's a 24 hour complimentary service that covers a host of items, but do look at the terms and conditions for more information. It also comes with cap price servicing for up to five years or 75,000 kilometers, whichever occurs first. Services cost an average of $573, which is competitive for the class, and servicing intervals are good at every 12 months or 15,000 kilometers, whichever occurs first. The Alfa Romeo Stelvio Veloce is the car you buy when you want a sports car, but might have a kid or two. The ride comfort is on the lower end for some items, but the power and the driving is definitely up there. It does have enough features too that it manages to slide into its price tag without feeling too cheeky. 
That back seat will limit it though to smaller families and I would have preferred to have seen much better tech at this grade level. So this gets a 7.1 out of 10 from me. My son didn't spend a lot of time in this one, but he did love the red paintwork. My mum, however, loved the power and the sexy packaging and she gives it an 8 out of 10. If you're after more details, check out the full review at carsguide.com.au and I'll see you next week.